Okay, let's take a look at a problem where we have a disc rolling across a surface without slipping while a force is being applied at the top. What we're going to do is let's let's try to find the force of friction on the disc at the point of contact P. And I'm going to take a guess here that the force of friction is directed to the right. Okay, the force of static friction. And it would be static because there's no slipping. So this is a disc. We know that the moment of inertia about the center of mass is equal to one half m r squared. We're looking for the force of static friction. And let's also look for the acceleration of the disk's center mass. So let's start with Newton's second law of translation. So we have sigma f equals m a c m. Net force this force plus the force of static friction, which I'm guessing is directed to the right, is equal to the mass of the disk times the acceleration of the center of mass. Next, I'm going to use Newton's second law of rotation. So the net torque is equal to I alpha. And I'm going to sum torques about P. And then that way I'll eliminate um, the force static frictions torque. Sigma tau P is equal to F force times lever arm 2R. That's equal to IP, which would be ICM 1 half MR squared plus the mass of the disk times R squared. And I'm using the parallel axis theorem there. Times alpha, which would be equal to ACM over R. Okay, continuing. We notice that the R's cancel. So we have 2F is equal to 1 half M plus M. It would be 3 halves M multiplied by ACM. Now, if I solve this equation for ACM, I get 4 thirds times the force over the mass of the disk. And then if I substitute the expression for the acceleration of the center of mass into this expression that I got using Newton's second law for translation, I can find the value of the force of static friction. Notice that the mass is canceled. It's all for the force of static friction. third of this force that's applied at the top for the force of static friction. Since my answer is coming out positive, my guess that it was directed to the right was correct. Now to find the acceleration of the center of mass, we can um, go back to this equation here and substitute in the force for the force of static friction. And then we can get the acceleration of the center of mass in terms of the force. Okay, so substituting into this expression, we have F plus F over 3 equals MACM. So that's um, 4 third F is equal to MACM. So ACM then is equal to 
Well, that right there, which I found earlier, so four thirds at or M. So I guess it wasn't necessary to go through that because I already did it there. Okay, what I would like to do now is a demonstration um, to show that the force of static friction does actually act to the right on a disc that's being pulled along by a force at the top. Okay, so here I have a, a low friction car with my disc, and I'm going to take string to the disc, like that, wrap the string around, and place this on the track, and then I'm going to exert a force to the left. Now, if the force of friction acts to the left as well, then from Newton's third law, shouldn't the gray car accelerate to the right? Well, let's see. And it did. Okay, so that verifies that the friction is to the right on the gray car, which means that the friction is to the left on the disk, just as we predicted. In other words, in the same direction as the force applied. Now let's take a look at a rolling problem where we apply a force at the center of mass of a rolling disk. And let's see if we can determine the force of static friction as well as the acceleration of the center of mass of the disk. Okay, so here's our disk. And we're applying force at the center of mass and we want to know what the force of static friction is at the point of contact P. Now again, it's rolling without slipping. So I'm going to take a guess that the force of static friction acts to the left. It's a disc, radius R, mass M, ICM is equal to 1 half M R squared. Using Newton's second law of translation, or for translation, we see that the force, this force minus the force of static friction should be equal to the mass of the disk times the acceleration of the disk's center of mass. Now what I'm going to do is apply Newton's second law for rotation. And I'm going to apply about point P, thus eliminating the need to worry about the torque exerted by friction. So the sum of the torques about P would be F times lever on R is equal to the moment of inertia about point P would be the moment of inertia about the center of mass, which is 1 half M R squared plus the mass of the disk multiplied by the perpendicular distance uh, between the two axes of rotation. Okay? one through point P and one through the center of mass. So that's MR squared. And then alpha would be ACM over R. So notice that the R is canceled. So we're left with F is equal to three halves M times ACM. So the force is equal to 3 halves the mass of the disk multiplied by the acceleration of the center of mass. So the acceleration of the center of mass then would be equal to 2 thirds F over M. How about the force of static friction? Okay, I'm going to take this equation, solve it for ACM, which I did and then substitute it into this expression here. So I'll take this and substitute it into this expression. So I have F minus the force of static friction is equal to M times 2 thirds F over M. The M's cancel. The force of static friction then is equal to 2 thirds F negative plus F gives us one-third the force 
force apply at the axle. So my guess that the force of static friction acts to the left was correct, because if it wouldn't have been correct, this would have came out to be negative. Notice that this is the magnitude of the force of static friction is equal to the magnitude of the force over three. So it should be a positive quantity. And since it is, then the force of static friction is indeed to the left. And what I'm going to do now is demonstrate this using the same apparatus I used previously. Okay, so here's the disc, and I have the str string attached to the center mass, as shown. And I'm going to place it on this low friction card here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to exert a force to the left. Now, according to the theory, the force of static friction would act to the right. So that means from Newton's third law that there should be a force to the left on the gray card. So the gray card should accelerate to the left when I pull the disc to the left. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three. And you can see it did that. Okay, so the force of static friction on the disc is in the same, no, it's in the opposite direction of the force that we apply at the axle. Let's take a look at a problem where we apply a force at the top of a hoop and it rolls without slipping along a level surface. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can find the force of static friction and the acceleration of the center of mass of the hoop. So I'm going to take a guess that the force of static friction is to the right, just a guess. So using the second law of translation, we have sigma f equals ma. So we have f plus the force of static friction is equal to m a c m, center of mass. Next I'm going to use Newton's second law for rotation. And I'm going to sum torques about P. So we have sigma F, I'm sorry, so we have F times its lever arm, which is 2R, is equal to the moment of inertia about point P for a hoop. Well, the moment of inertia of a hoop about its center mass is equal to MR squared. So MR squared plus the mass of the hoop times the radius squared would be the moment of inertia about P, point of contact. And then I multiply that by alpha ACM over R. Notice that the R's cancel. So we have 2F equals 2M ACM. Two's cancel. So the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to the force that we apply at the top of the hoop divided by m. And you can see that the force of static friction must be zero. If you don't see that, take this and substitute it into this equation here. So we have force applied at the top plus the force of static friction is equal to the mass of the hoop times the force applied at the top, divided by the mass of the hoop. Mass is canceled. Solving for the force of static friction, we get zero. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate this using the low friction heart and a hoop on top with a string exerting a force at the top of the hoop. Okay, here's the hoop. We have a low friction car. And I'm gonna exert a force to the left top of the hoop, and according to the theory, there is no friction. So that means there should be no force on the gray cart due to the hoop, horizontally that is, so the, the, the gray cart should stay at rest, as it did.